Have you played the new imposter mode in Fortnite? Well, in addition to being a great game mode, there are countless secrets and references to find. And by countless, I mean 36. Some are inconsequential, and others may be foreshadowing the future. So if you'd kindly sit your butt down for 10 minutes and slap code Adamaru in the store, let's do this. Okay, let's start small and work up to the big stuff. Before starting a PC-based task in-game, a screensaver will be running, a bouncing I.O. symbol. If you're old enough to remember DVDs, you'll recognise this. At school, we used to watch these for hours in the hopes of seeing the symbol hit the corner perfectly. And it turns out we weren't alone. Every single teenager in the entire world did this. And a few adults too. Oh! And now it's in Fortnite. And yes, it does hit the corner. Very satisfying. Okay, back to the start of the game mode. Did this pre-game lobby look familiar to you? It turns out this is a repurposed set of assets from the Unvaulting Live event back in May 2019, more than two years ago. The color scheme has been updated, but it's the same floor we walked on when we unvaulted the drum gun. This easter egg has a second part. Speaking of that live event, at the rear of the armory is a vaulting panel which has a gun you may not have seen before. Fortnite OGs will remember this as the Zappatron, a save the world weapon which accidentally found its way into BR for a few hours. French streamer Ionix was the first to record a clip which has been shared countless times. Soon after, the Zappatron was removed and returned to the vault. And now we know where it's been all this time, safely locked away. When will it be set free? Save the World gets a second nod in the weapon room over by this wall of weapons. Everything here is accounted for, but one of these is not like the others. You may be asking yourself what it is. This, my friends, is the Zap Zap, an alien weapon which uses three power cells per shot. As we don't use energy cells in Battle Royale, it's unlikely this gun will be the same if it does come to BR. But if Fortnite want to introduce some more sci-fi weapons to the island, Season 7 is the perfect time. On to Jonesy's room. This place is great. I can safely say Jonesy is a bachelor or a man-child. Take a look around in here and you'll see so many references to the history of Fortnite, it'll blow your mind. Jonesy's wardrobe shows us a collection of his alter egos over the years. This is most likely how he's re-entering the loop without being noticed. He simply dresses up like a former snapshot. But one thing in here teaches us so much more. Take a look at Jonesy's wardrobe. A suit for every day of the week. But one suit is missing though. We now know the exact day Jonesy was last here. It was a Tuesday, mate. I did a little research and found that the device event happened on Monday the 15th of June 2020. So this doesn't completely marry up perfectly, but in Australia and the Southern Hemisphere, the event did happen on a Tuesday. Anyway, Jonesy's suit wasn't looking too good by the end. Elsewhere in this room, I'm sure you've noticed the mini-games referencing Dance Dance Revolution and the original Street Fighter at the arcade cabinet. Well, take a look-see here and you'll see a host of nods to the Fortnite world. The alien rifle, the merman statue and the green lantern mask have previously been on the island already. Remember where? It was the rig. Midas's chambers had these items in and also the Venturian skin, which was changed to the Cyclo skin before the event. It looks like Agent Jones snuck into here, took a few Midas mementos before going back to his desk and watching the event. Another Season 2 item is below it from the Grotto, the sword which sat in Brutus's room. It was also the most clickbaited sword in YouTuber thumbnails for about a week, back when Deadpool arrived. Now it belongs to Jones. This next cabinet took me on a six hour research deep dive on the web, all because of this box with multiple warnings not to open. I mean, there are four warnings here. Identifying the shape was tough, but I can confirm this shape of cube with triangular edges is known as Pandora's cube. The term Pandora's box typically refers to something that is best left alone because it will cause problems if opened. And judging by those warnings, this theory lines up well. The story of Pandora's box is a legend used by ancient Greeks to explain human weakness and lack of control. Her curiosity eventually got the better of her, like it is with me right now. And long story short, inside was pure suffering. Lovely. That, that wasn't the end of my research though, but let's put a pin in this, but it gets good, I promise you. Let's crack on. There is something in this room I'm unable to decipher, if you'd be so kind to help me out. On the way into the room on the right hand wall are many images of Agent Jones, but the quality is too low to get any details. Some sort of space travel to an alien planet. The colour scheme matches up with the current alien invasion, but the map? That map is new. Also, who is he hugging here? I'll be honest, not knowing is killing me. 
Next onto loop control. The design of this room is taken from the Marvel world and the X-Men. It's Cerebro. This is a place Professor X would go to locate and communicate with any mutant on Earth. It began as an Epcot looking golf ball before it was taken underground and hidden from prying eyes. Just like loop control in Fortnite. Oh, and while we're here, stick around and see what happens when the imposters break it. Spam bots fill the room with this kind of stuff. One of these took my eye as it looks like a character model mesh. I'm completely hopeless at identifying skins, but luckily my Discord fam is cracked and they told me this was Summit Striker. A completely random easter egg to put in, but maybe this skin has more importance than we know. It was a starter pack, wasn't it? I'm sure you found Jonesy's office in-game and matched it up with the version from the trailers. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? Did you also notice that Sloane's office is here too? We can't go in, but it's a great nod to the character all the same. Well, something happens in these rooms. Keep an eye on the clock and you'll notice that the hands flip around when an imposter sabotages. This could be a nod to the clock during the live event of the device all those months ago. Many people reported that the clock timer changed dramatically each time the loop was affected. This would tie into the law. Or maybe it's just there because it's just there. Sometimes the simplest answers are the right ones. Okay, onto the science lab. What a great room this is. We have a tiny version of Kevin the Cube, which we can feed our trash. It's difficult to know if this is the OG Cube, a new version, or maybe a cutting from the one that exploded. Looking elsewhere in the room, we can see the mecha team leader's helm being analyzed after her visit to another dimension. But here's something I'm confused by. On the opposite side of the room, there is another item analyzer, but someone has removed it. It may be nothing, but Epic wouldn't go so far to make this room so detailed and forget to put something here. So keep an eye on this spot just next to the other Marvel Easter egg, Captain America's shield. On to the other side of the room. On the right hand side is a fragment of the meteor. If you weren't around in chapter one, you may not know the importance of this thing. This is how the Seven got onto our island, either the visitor or the foundation. All we know for certain is that the Seven are considered the enemy of the IO, and now we see they are analyzing their mode of transport. And then we have the Infinity Blade, the sword which broke the game back in season seven of chapter one. This actually has lore which could relate to the story, especially now it's in the same room as the cube. Let's break some lore down. The Infinity Blade is a weapon so powerful it can kill one of the Deathless, a breed of warriors in the Infinity Blade world who cannot be killed. Here's where things get funky. One of the seals of the Deathless used is guarded via a language called Pangean, which looks like this. Notice anything about it? It's the same runes as on the cube. And wait, there's more. Remember the Pandora cube in Jonesy's room? Well, that sigil, the marking on that cube, is in fact another seal from Infinity Blade. That's three references to Infinity Blade, including the Infinity Blade. This could all be coincidence and a reuse of asset. Or now the Infinity Blade series is over, this could be a way to bring that world into Fortnite. Maybe we should open that box after all. Okay, let's lighten the mood. Did you know that officially Epic Games agrees with me that if you put pineapple on your pizza, you are a psycho? It's fact. I expect anyone who is willing to add pineapple to a pizza to own up in the comments and renounce all sins. Oh, on one of the monitors you can find this image. These are from when everyone expected Tilted Towers to be eradicated in Chapter 1. We were completely wrong, but the runes and the theory matched up really well. And now it's an easter egg. Oh, stand around long enough and look into the sea and you will spot a shark. A good looking fellow too. And that brings me to the CSI room, Crime Scene Investigation. Down here is a treasure trove of theories and lore. First, that shark. On the whiteboard, you'll see a shark with a laser on its head, which became the laser chomp glider in game. This is actually an Easter egg to an Easter egg, which is a nod to Austin Powers and Dr. Evil's desire to own, well, I'll, I'll let him say himself. And that is to have sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. The shark project seems to be named Bruce after the shark from Finding Nemo, who is the basis for the Fortnite design. Hello. And things get a little more strange because the team are planning on turbocharging sharks with a rocket propeller. I'm down for that. And a guy named Harrison needs to be reminded of this. Do not feed the sharks, no matter what they tell you. Whether this is a nod to an employee at Epic or a new character to be aware of, the advice is important to every single one of us. On the other side of the room is a crazy detailed theory board, which is extremely low resolution. 
First we have Io attempting to uncover the leader of the Seven. The thing is, almost all of these images here are from our real world discussions on Reddit and Twitter asking about the Seven. Epic literally used our own images to show how obsessed we are with finding answers. On here we see shots of previous events and members of the Seven. But wait, who's that? The Prisoner. Back in Chapter 1 Season 7, this chap was frozen by the Ice King, but slowly thawed out over the season. He eventually regained his flame-based powers and suddenly a volcano appeared. From that day, we didn't see him again. This is the first reference to the prisoner in years. But wait, there's more. Go back up to Jonesy's bedroom and check who lives next door. Someone very flammable occupies the next room. There are many fiery characters in Fortnite, but I think this is what happened to the prisoner. He's inside this room, or it's the Human Torch. And finally, I shall leave you with a question. Back in the CSI room, it's possible to see a map of Chapter 2 with three strings attached as a clue. All the strings begin at steamy stacks and end at the places we currently call Coral Castle, Retail Row, and the former Central Island. Whatever this means, the IO are linking it to the Seven. I have no theories here. Can you understand this? And can you let me know, please? Thank you very much. So there we have it, 36 secrets, Easter eggs and references in as quick a fashion as I could. I'm Adam, you're awesome. And thank you to those people who use my code this week. I'll be back in my Twitter DMs tomorrow to thank you personally. See ya. Oh,